thousands of years. I'm out of date. And I'm out of patience. You could at least try to stop that storm. Well, all right. I'll try. Maybe I've still got some of the old stuff left. where you're going, you little imp. What are you riding right on the sidewalk anyway? Oh, on your father's mustache. You don't own the sidewalk. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresh little brat, you ought to be spanked. Yes, that was the way this day started. And I, Thornton J. Poindexter, was burned up even before I got to the newsstand at the corner. The usual paper? Certainly. There you are, three cents. I know the price. Here. Take it out of this five dollar bill. Did you get anything smaller? I can't change that. You can't? Why don't you keep some change on hand so you can do business properly? Take it easy, mister. It's pretty early in the morning. Never mind. I don't want any alibis. I'll buy my paper somewhere else. Hey, old crab. Well, my day certainly was getting off to a bad start. When I got to the station, some dope ahead of me was getting a commuter's ticket.
Look, how long are you going to hold everybody up, mister? Just as long as it takes the lady to make out my commuters take a chum. Any objections? You certainly picked a fine time for it. You're going to make me miss my train. No, ain't that just too bad. So I missed my train. And that made me ten minutes late at the office. And then to make matters worse, when I got in the elevator, a female monster loaded with parcels was jabbing me and pushing me around. Fine thing, put another busy elevator this hour of the morning with a bunch of junk. I beg your pardon? Are you referring to me? Ah, uh, your father's mustache. <laughs> yes, that was one thing I learned from the kid on the bicycle. Anyhow, by the time I got to the office, late, of course, I was fit to be tied. And of course, so was the boss. He gave me a look that would fry an egg. I ignored him and got by. But things didn't improve as the day went on. At lunch, for instance, I had a run-in with the waitress. What do you have? Well, I have the boiled beef. We're out of boiled beef. I'll have the, uh, Finn and Hattie. We're out of Finn and Hattie, but, uh... Look, is this a restaurant or isn't it? Do you serve food here or don't you? This is a restaurant, mister. We do serve food when we have it. But you can't come in this late on the lunch hour and expect to pick and choose. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if you want a ham sandwich or something... I don't want to eat anything in this hash house. My aching feet. So I ended up eating a hamburger in a joint around the corner. What a day. What a day. Then to cap the climax, I had a date at my bank to talk over a loan I need in order to buy a new house. So on my lunch hour, I went to see the third assistant vice president. He was a cold fish, and I wasn't in a very good mood either, believe me. <clears throat> How do you do, Mr. Poindexter? Sit down. Thanks. I've examined your application for a loan from the bank, and there are a few more facts we have to have. What do you mean, facts? Details, more data on your financial position, shall we say. Well, I've had an account in this bank for 12 years. I've got a darn good credit rating, and you want more facts. You don't have to get so excited about it, Poindexter. It's a matter of routine. Routine? Oh, I suppose you'd like to know the color of my second cousin's eyes or how often I get a haircut. What is this, a bank of the third degree? On second thought, Poindexter, I believe we can dispense with the extra information. You'll hear from us in a few days by mail. Goodbye, Poindexter. I can assure you your application for a loan will receive all of the attention it deserves. Well, I knew then that I'd never get the loan, but it wasn't my fault. Everything had gone so wrong, I felt upset and unhappy, and now, I, uh, now I'm dead tired, and I hate to go home and tell Mary about what happened at the bank. And... There, if I ever saw one, is a human who could use a miracle, Jupiter. Boy, <laughs> everything that's happened to him, he brought on himself. If he hadn't antagonized everybody the way he did, his day wouldn't have turned out nearly so bad. Oh, true enough, only he doesn't know that. Why don't you haul off and work some kind of a miracle that'll fix things up for you? What kind of a miracle? Oh, I don't know. Something simple like... I've got it. Why not let him relive his bad day? Only this time, show him how to treat other people better. So he'll get treated better. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Might be interesting at that. Although, mind you, I, I don't think he'll act much differently. All humans are ornery. Anyway, you can try. Well, okay. Here goes. Poindexter. Oh, Poindexter. Poindexter. What? Who's that? This is Jupiter, Poindexter. Jupiter? Jupiter who? I beg your pardon, were you talking to me? No, I'm talking to Jupiter. That's right. I'm a god. Lots of people used to believe in me. 
Oh, of course you're kidding. I suppose you're up in the sky someplace. That I am, son. That I am. Some nonsense. What did you say? Uh, will you please stay out of this conversation, lady? I'm talking to Jupiter. Oh. Jupiter. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad this is my stop. Listen, Coindexter. How would you like to go through this bad day over again and have everything turn out all right? How could I? The day's already gone. And you wasted it because you forgot a few fundamentals on how to get along with people. I did, such as? Well, such as a soft answer turneth away wrath. You can catch more flies with sugar than vinegar. Kindness, like corn, increases by sowing. It's all corn, if you should ask me. Everyone I had trouble with today was ornery and me. They didn't remember any of those old proverbs. Well, they might have, son, if you had. Yeah, what makes you think so? Because, Poindexter, courtesy is contagious. <laughs> so is smallpox. What can I do with somebody like that? Stay with it. That Poindexter needs help. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Poindexter. Yeah, what is it? Let me put it this way. Do you consider yourself a selfish man? Hmm. No, I wouldn't say so. Well, then it's high time you started getting selfish, Poindexter. Looking out for your own happiness. You've got to get selfish, Poindexter. Wisely selfish. Well, I don't get it. One minute you want me to be courteous, and the next minute you want me to be selfish. Now, how come? Well, being courteous is being selfish. Because every time you go out of your way to be extra nice to someone, you're laying the groundwork for that someone to be extra nice to you. That means your life is going to be a lot more pleasant, a lot more profitable, and certainly a lot more fun. So you're really being selfish. You're putting something in the bank of human relations that's going to pay you fat dividends. See? <laughs> yeah, if the bank doesn't fold. Fold? Oh, but it can't, Poindexter. Because when the person you've been kind and courteous to pays you back, he's being selfish too. Because you're going to tax some interest on what he's invested. Nobody loses. I uh, don't know, it sounds too easy. Ah, uh, but it's not, Poindexter. Sometimes it's pretty hard to do unto others so they do right by you. Because courtesy isn't a tip of the hat, the warm hand clasp, or the big fat compliment. All right, I'll stooge for you. What then is courtesy? Well, it's something that comes from inside you, down deep. It, it's patience and understanding of somebody else's problems and troubles. It's being helpful and friendly to people because you like and understand people. It's saving the other guy's face in an argument so that you can save your own. It's selfishness, Poindexter. Why selfishness that does you more good than the good you're doing? That's so. Sure. So why not take a whirl at it, old boy? I'll haul off and work a miracle for you that'll let you relive your tough day. Only this time, when you get tempted to get irritated at somebody, get smart. Get selfish instead. I'll give you a little reminder like this. <laughs> Say, that's kind of pretty. Well, that'll remind you to get selfish. After you hear it, you're on your own. And we'll see what happens. Fair enough? Well, I, I guess so. Okay. Sick, transit, Gloria, Abacadabra, and Gesundheit. Now I've seen everything. Hey, you, why don't you look where you're going? Why, you little... Uh-uh, Poindexter. You're starting up wrong. Get wise. Get selfish. Do yourself some good. All right, Jupiter, that's right. Here you are, Sonny. Let me help you out. Did you hurt yourself? No, sir. 
I'm sorry I almost ran into you. I'm late for school. Well, we don't want that to happen, do we? Don't you think you'd make better times to road in the street? Oh, I guess you're right. Sure. Say, you're Mr. Poindexter that lives at 2085, aren't you? Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, I deliver your evening paper. Say, would you do me a favor? Well, sure I will. Well, um, would you mind putting the paper under the front door, man, instead of throwing it on the front porch? I know it'll be a little more trouble, but uh, see, I have a dog as long as he gets a hold of it and tears it up. Sure I will, Mr. Poindexter. I'll do that. Glad to. Well, thanks a lot. I'll see you around. Oh, and another thing. If that uh, teacher of yours gets mad because you're late, why, you tell her the truth. Tell her the man knocked you off your... Yes, sir. Well, goodbye, Mr. Poindexter. Goodbye, boy. That's a nice boy. How do you feel, Poindexter? Me? I feel good. Sure you do. That kid had troubles enough of his own, but you didn't add to them. You sympathized. And in return, you got a little extra service from him. <laughs> yes, I did. Say, maybe there's something in what you say. Ah, uh, yes, but don't get too self-confident, Poindexter. Your day has only started. It'll get tougher for him as the day goes along. Oh, not necessarily. Maybe it'll get easier. Uh, I don't know. That newsstand dealer down there still looks crabby. The usual paper? Certainly. There you are, three cents. I know the price. <sighs> By Jupiter, Fred, I'm in kind of a spot. Uh, I want my usual morning paper, but the smallest I have is a $5 bill, and I know you don't want to change that for a three-cent purchase. And I only don't want to, I can't. Ain't got that much change. Too early in the morning. Well, you don't have to be so... <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll run over to the all-night drugstore and I'll get this changed and then you'll have some silver to work with, huh? Huh? You didn't know that, Mr. Poindexter. Here's your paper. You can pay me tomorrow. Well, thanks. And say, I'm sorry I was so crabby just now. I was up all night with the wife. She's sick. So, what's the matter? Uh, rheumatism or lumbago or something. The docs can't seem to make up their minds. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Say, I know a doctor that's a wizard, that kind of stuff. Why, well, he cured me in a jiffy about a year ago. Better try him out. Here, I'll give you his name and address. Gee, thanks, Mr. Poindexter. There you are. And say, uh, remember a few months ago, I, you told me to get you a hometown newspaper, and I told you it wasn't worth the trouble, and you got mad? Sure, I remember. Well, that paper's going to be on his stand every morning, rain or shine. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Thanks a lot, Fred. He seems to be catching on, doesn't he? Don't strum that liar so hard this time and see what happens. Well, I don't know. He won't want to miss that train again. And there's that same fellow buying a commuter's ticket. <coughs> Look, how long... Why, Jupiter. Uh, pardon me, are you getting a commuter's ticket? Yeah. Why? Well, I know from bitter experience that it takes the girl quite a while to fill one of those things out. And I wondered if you'd let me get a single ticket. It would keep me from missing my train. Wait your turn like everybody else. By Jupiter, that's right. I, I shouldn't try to barge in, should I? <laughs> you don't know my boss. I'm so much as two minutes late. He'll just give me the devil. Eh? Yeah? You got that kind of boss, too, huh? No. Well, here, step in and get your ticket. There ain't in no hurry. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. One of the city, please. It's okay. I hope you punch that clock on time. Oh, I will, and thanks to you. There's my train now. Thanks. I'll see you around. Say, I didn't have to play very loud in that one, did I? No, he's catching on. I told you he would. And he isn't going to be late for work. Isn't that nice? Well, I don't know. Look, he's in the elevator getting jabbed just as he was before. Fine thing, Tottenham. Have a great Fine, Jupiter. Those packages look a little heavy. Here, let me help you. Why, thank you. They are pretty bulky. Sort of hard getting around downtown during the early morning rush hour, isn't it? It certainly is. In fact, I wouldn't have tried it, but I promised to take all these packages down to the collecting agency for the crippled children's hospital before nine o'clock. Oh, the children's hospital. I used to be on one of its committees. I've got a real interest in the work they do there. Tell me how often you... See? You only had to touch a few strings that time. <laughs> Jupiter, 
Our lad is really getting into stride fast. Well, it seems as though. And look, he's even rating a big smile from his boss. Well, the day seems to be going all right. Oh, still, he, he has to face that waitress whose feet hurt. Tell you what, just pluck one string this time. He may be smart enough by now, so he won't need much of a reminder. All right. What do you have? Well, I'll have the boiled beef. We're out of boiled beef. And I'll have uh, Finn and Hattie. We're out of Finn and Hattie, but... Uh... Look, is this a restaurant or... By Jupiter. I didn't realize it was so late. You're probably sold out of everything, aren't you? Yes, sir, we are. We had a lot of business for lunch. Well, uh, what would you suggest? I'm pretty hungry. Well, I'll tell you. It isn't on the luncheon menu, but I can get you a nice steak and french fries if you'd like it. Oh, that's wonderful. Now you're cooking. Medium rare? Medium well. Say, you see that? I used only one string that time, and I got a mistake. <laughs> I have to eat hash. But you have to admit, I can work the miracles with hash. You know, I think Poindexter ought to be able to go it alone from here on out. Look, he's coming out of the bank now. Poindexter, how'd you make out this time? Be fine. Well, I didn't hear your reminder. <laughs> well, that's because I didn't give you any. Fact is, Poindexter, you're graduated. You're on your own now. <laughs> well, that's okay by me. <laughs> you know, I found out how to make that courtesy is contagious thing work. Good, good. Pass the word along too, will you? I can't be bothered to make miracles for everybody. You bet I'll do that. How do you feel now, Poindexter? Well, I feel like a million dollars. And I gotta hurry back to the office. Well, I'll keep in touch with you, Jupiter, old boy. Goodbye. Hello, Andy. Oh, you waiting for me? You're darn right I am. What's on your mind? I got a gripe. I'm mad. Yeah, what's the matter? Plenty. It's that Joe Curtis's department. I had a fight with him this morning. Yeah, how'd you make out? Second best, doggone it. How was the fight about? Oh, the same old thing. Joe insists that I keep out-of-town billings separate from local ones. And he knows darn well that it takes twice as much time to do it that way than to do it my way. Boy, I told him off plenty. She came out second best, huh? Well, he's just bullheaded. Andy, I had a funny experience today that taught me something. How I learned it, I won't tell you because you wouldn't believe me. But what I learned was very important to me. And easy and simple and something perhaps you can use. Oh? Well, uh, what is it? Well, you've got to be selfish in this wacky world of ours. Selfish? Yeah, but wisely selfish. You better keep talking. That's made sense to me so far. Well, everybody runs into people and situations every day that just irritate like the dickens. And everybody's first instinct is to get mad and lash back so they can burn the other guy up. But it usually doesn't work out that way. You come out second best, just like you did. So, hey, wait a minute now. You're not preaching at me, are you? Me? No. I'm just passing on something I learned the hard way by, Jupiter. Anytime you get into one of these spots, just remember one thing and you'll come out first best. Be selfish by saying and doing the things that'll make your life more pleasant. Now, here's what I suggest you do. You go back in that next office and talk to Joe again. Our lad is certainly saving you some work on miracles, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. There. Andy has gone back into Joe's office. And Poindexter is doing a little eavesdropping. Let's do the same thing. Huh? Oh, goody. I like to eavesdrop. And I suddenly realized, Joe, that if I don't build the out-of-town stuff separately, it means a lot more work for your department. So from here on out, you're going to get those billings just the way you want. Well, say, thanks, Andy. It'll be a big help. And by the way, I think I can show you how to do that billing the way we have to have it in a lot less time than the way you've been doing it. I, uh... I guess I just haven't had a chance to tell you about it before. But if you want to spend five minutes right now... Sure thing, Joe. Tell me about it. It worked again, Jupiter. Sure it worked, Poindexter. It always works. And it doesn't take a miracle to make it work, either. 
You just showed Andy how to be wisely selfish. I sure did, and he cashed in nicely, didn't he? Naturally. Well, anyhow, you won't need us anymore. But be sure to keep passing the word along, Poindexter. I certainly will, Jupe, every chance I get. After all, I found out that people, all kinds of people, are always hungry for a little understanding and kindness and patience. And when they get it, they feel better and they act better. And they give it back with interest. Isn't that it, Jupe? That's it, son. That's it. Well, so long, Poindexter. So long, Jupiter.